In today's show, we talk about how to manipulate SharePoint lists using PowerShell. But first, our intro. <laughs> Hello, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And in today's show, we're going to talk about how to use PowerShell to manipulate your SharePoint list. So we're going to create a list, we're going to edit a list, we're going to copy list items from one list to another list, we're going to delete some items, we're going to delete the list at the end just for cleaning up after the mess, but should be fun, right? Because one of the things that I've ran into a lot in my SharePoint days is you end up with mega lists, right? That list has been growing and growing and growing. You're like, man, I just wish I could prune it. I could kind of take some of this and some of this and separate it out into a couple of lists. So really that's what this PowerShell is all about. Sounds like fun? I bet it does. Also sounds like fun to those interns who don't have to copy and paste that stuff anymore for you. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so we've switched over here to my SharePoint server. This is my SharePoint 2016 server that we've been building as part of my SharePoint series. But this PowerShell could be applicable for SharePoint 2010, SharePoint 2013. So don't get lost there. Also, I've went ahead, I've logged into the uh, desktop as an administrator, my SP install account, and I've ran the PowerShell prompt as an administrator. Remember that uh, if any of this is new to you, like, hey, how do I get started? How do I get to this point? Then there is a video right about there that will tell you how to uh, do the PowerShell basics. So it gets you kind of to this point. But we're going to assume you've watched that, so let's just dive in. And the first thing that I always do when I open up a PowerShell prompt is I'm going to type in start-transcript. Right, that's just going to give me a running log of everything I do. So if I screw up, I can always go back and look at it. Or if I learn something new, I've got a record. And so now we have done, done that, I'm going to create us a new web at http portal.shanescows.com slash video. And we'll set that to use template STS pound zero. Hit enter. And so that's just going to give us a new web to play with. So that way I'm not pulling any tricks out of my sleeves, right? I'm not doing the whole, here, look, it's already baked and just sliding it out of the oven. So we'll create ourselves a new web. All right. So about 15 seconds later, now that that's done, we're going to switch over to our IE and then we're just going to navigate to that URL. Boom. Standard team site, nothing going on. We've got it set up. All right. Easy enough. We'll minimize that again, and we'll clear off the screen. I try to do that a lot just to kind of keep it only focused on what we're doing. And so the first thing you have to do when you create a list is you have to get um, kind of get into that object. So PowerShell, you know, for SharePoint comes with things for getting a site collection, getting a web application, even getting the webs, but it stops there. It doesn't give you a way to get a list specifically. So in order to do that, what we're going to do so we're going to paste in um, a little PowerShell, right? So it's just going to set the cal variable to our current web. So that way we can kind of work from there uh, moving forward. And then once I've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to drill in. And so what you can see is, what enter, is that so for the dollar sign cal, right? So for that web, there's a list uh, member. And for the list member, there is an add method. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say add a list named large list and then use a uh, test description as the description. I didn't want to spell the word description, so I made it test script because I'm lazy. And then we're going to use the template generic list. Uh, so we won't get into how to choose what templates you want right now, but if you were looking for that, there is, um, you can just do for the web, you can do a, there's a prop uh, method called list templates, right? So you could do dollar sign cow dot, list templates and then I would just do something like this select name comma internal name internal name and so then that gives you a list of all of the different um, lists and then what their name is and so that's what you'd use in that third spot in the add list value all right but like I said we're not going to dive into that too much so I'll clear my screen off again okay so now we have uh, created a list called large list and what I want to do before we go look at that list is we're actually going to uh, manipulate it a little bit and we're going to run all of this PowerShell. So I'll copy it and then explain it here. Hit enter. Okay. So what we're going to say is take a variable and say dollar sign zebra equals cows dot go get the list large list. So go get the list we just created and set it to the variable zebra. So think of this as get SP list, right? That's PowerShell command that Microsoft didn't give us. 
And so then you can say, all right, for zebra, there's a members fields, and then you can do a method of add. So we're going to add a field named color, and we're going to use the type of text. And then zero is it's one of those programming things. Just ignore it. It's always zero for us. So that creates a uh, field called color. We're going to do the same thing, create a field, a note field called animal. So that creates that. And then also what I wanted to do is I wanted to add these uh, columns to the default view. So I dollar sign horse equals zebras, right? So our list views all items. So get SP view, right? That's kind of what we're doing here. So get the view, set it to horse, set it to the horse value. And so for horse field values, add color, horse field values, add animal. So just add those two columns and then do a horse dot update, right? Pretty straightforward, I think. So if we go over here to um, our portal and go to site contents, we should now have a list called large list. Hey, there it is. We'll click on that. And so then now that that's opened up, we can see there's our title field, our color column, and our animal column. So just like we wanted. It does annoy me though that it doesn't show up over here in the drop downs or in the uh, quick launch menu, right? I would expect it to be there. It'd be easier for me to do this demo. So we'll switch back to PowerShell, all right? We know we could do it through the browser, but that's no fun. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in right here. I'm gonna grab this, right? Let's clear the screen off, CLS. Oh, CL. Third time's charm. CLS, there we go. Paste that in. And so what that says is Zebra, so that's our list. Get the on quick launch property and set that to true. And then Zebra update that. And so now if we do a refresh over here, Yay, we have a large list in our drop down. So there you go. There's a pretty straightforward way to do all this. We'll clear that off again. Um, one of the things I would recommend is, you know, the way that you figure this stuff out is you go and you look at, hey, how, how do I do this in the GUI, right? So you're like, hey, I got to go, you know, change the description for a list. Well, I know in the GUI it's pretty straightforward, but instead of doing it through the GUI, go find the PowerShell way to do it, right? Even if it, it's going to take you a lot longer, right? You can change it in the GUI in 10 seconds. It might take you two hours to figure out how to do it in PowerShell the first time, but it's going to teach you more about how PowerShell works, right? You're going to have to learn how to go and get the list and then drill in there and do like a get member to find all the properties. And you're going to find, oh, look, there's a property for description. And then you're going to try setting that property equals to whatever and run an update and bam, it works. And so that type of learning just kind of gets the muscles and the brain thinking because it's the same process if you want to go edit a web or a site collection, right? It might not be the same fields or the same values, but it'll be the same methodology. So this is one of the tricks to learning PowerShell is to find tasks you know how to do in the browser and then go and do them in PowerShell, all right? So let's keep going here. So speaking of things I can do in the browser that I don't want to do is we need some content to play with, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this PowerShell and paste it in. We'll run it and we'll talk about what it does. And speaking of all this PowerShell, um, I am going to make this available so you can download it. You know, you can get my little cheap file over here so you can just copy and paste. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet though. So just check down in the comments or I'll probably have a little pop-up annotation about there. It says, hey, he meant to tell you that this goes right here. Either way, um, I'll make this available in some capacity so you guys don't have to type all this in. It is a lot of typing. All right. So let's talk about what it does. So if you look up here, I'm going to say dollar sign list equals get SP web or so our new web. And then for that web, get the uh, large list. So just go get our list. This is just a different way to get the list like we did earlier. Um, and in reality, the dollar sign list variable is exact same as the dollar sign zebra variable. But what I, what I did here was I figured some people are going to watch in chunks. And so I want to make sure that each chunk would work individually also. So that's the reason I'm just kind of repeating myself. Okay. So then what we'll do here is for i equals one, i less than or equal to 100, i plus plus. So run this loop 100 times is what that essentially says, right? What we're going to do is we're going to say item equals list items add. So take that list and go to the items property and use the add method. So add a new item and set the vi value for title to item title plus i. So that way each one will be incremental. Item title one, item title two, et cetera, et cetera. Just give us something unique. Set the color field then to, this is a new little PowerShell command that I actually learned just to make this video. And it's get random input, blue or red. So it's just going to get pull a random value out of any of the things you listed here. So either make it blue or red for me. Sounds like fun. And then for animal, do the same type of thing, except I did dog, cow, horse, and zebra. 
And then for each item, I need to update, right? And so that just writes it in. So now that that's ran, if we go over here to PowerShell, or not to PowerShell, to Internet Explorer, and hit refresh, you can see we have 100 items and they're all random values, right? So you can see red dog, blue dog, red dog, red cow. Um, this is just gives us a good sample set, right? This would be another one of those things to be helpful if you're trying to figure out how large your lists work and list throttling and stuff. You might create a list with 10,000 items. That script will create a list in 10,000 items in, you know, less than a minute. So gives you some different options. Um, if we scroll down, you know, we could page through. Just trust me, there's 100 items in here, all right? So let's go back to our PowerShell. And so then what we'll do now is now that we have that list, we have some data, we want to split that list up. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull everything that is the red color and move it to a second list, right? So maybe you're moving everything that is related to customer A or related to the year 2010 to a different list. And so first step to do that is we need to create another list that's exactly the same. So we'll paste in that same PowerShell again. Right, create a second list. So dollar sign cow equals get the web cow list add new list. So this one we're gonna name new list. Test description still generic list. There's the list good. We don't need that, but there it is. And then go get that list, and then add the fields of color and animal, and then go add color and animal to the all items view. Boom. So if we go over here to site contents, there's our new list. And it is empty. If we wanted to add it to the quick launch, it's the same exact PowerShell again. So copy Zebra 2 on quick launch equals true. Update, boom. Refreshing. There's so we got new list and large list both over here. New list is empty, large list has a hundred of our random items. All right. You hanging on? Now it's time for the fun. This is probably the real reason you watch the video, is what I'm about to show you. We'll switch back over to PowerShell. I will clear my screen. Let's paste it in and then talk about what it does. Okay. So dollar sign web equals get our web, right? Once again, I'm not consistent on how I do it or name this stuff. Why well, I'm a bad person, but I wanted to make it so each module ran independent of each other. And so that's what I was really after here. That's why I don't just keep reusing the same variables over again. So then your source is web list, large list. So that's where we're going to set get the uh, list large list and make it source and then we're going to make the target variable the new list easy enough and then our items well that's going to be the source items and then what we're going to do is we're going to get just the ones where the color equals red so go to the source list and get all the items that the color equals red and put them in this variable items and then for each item and items so for all the numbers in there we're going to run this loop one time and what we're going to do is we're going to say new item equals target items add so go to the new list get the uh, items uh, member and then run the add uh, method to it and then we're going to set the new items title equals the old items title and the new items color equals the old items color new items animal field set to the items animal and then update and then we'll just loop through continuously right so I've used this for a lot of different things in the past. This is just a straight one-to-one -one copy, but say that we maybe were copying documents out of a document library, you can actually pull like the uh, old modified date and set that to the modified date in the, um, the new list or same thing for create date. There's a lot of that type of stuff you can do. You can change who owns it or you can change a property along the way, right? Maybe you didn't want to have a one-for-one -one copy. You wanted to update things along the way. No problem. It's just simple PowerShell. Create this thing and set it to whatever value you can put in here. So keep that in mind. You don't have to just do a one-for-one -one copy. All right, so now that that's done, if we go over to our new list, and we're here, we're gonna see that it looks like new list ended up with 43 items, and they're all the things where the color is red. So we have 43 items here, but if we look at large list, all the red items are still here also, and so it still has 100. So we don't want that. We, only want, we should only have 57 in this particular list, right? So in order to achieve that, we have to do our next PowerShell. So we'll open PowerShell back up, we'll clear our screen. I will grab some text to copy, copy that out and paste it in. We'll talk about what this does. So I will tell you before we start this though, that deleting items from a list is the slowest thing that I know how to do in PowerShell. 
It's just a very, SharePoint takes its time when it's cleaning up, it's trying not to cause any confusion, any locks, any issues for any of the other data in there. So when you're deleting, you know, in this case, um, 50 items or 57, 43, whatever it is, it doesn't take too terribly long. It's still gonna take 15, 20 seconds here. But if you're deleting 10,000 items, it might take an hour and it's gonna cause your SharePoint environment to, you know, be real, real mad at you for a little bit. So just keep that in mind. You wanna be very careful with deletes. Also, deleting is a tricky topic. So as we walk through my PowerShell here, you're gonna see that I had to kind of do it in an awkward way. And that's because in my head as a simple administrator, right? I'm like, oh, just go get the list and then just delete the ones I want and be done. But what happens is when I get the list and I delete the first one, the list changes. And PowerShell refers to that as the collection changes. And so the next one tries to run and it errors out because it's like, hey, no, your collection changed. That's bad. I don't know what's happening. Start over. And so what you have to do is you have to find a creative way around that. I've probably found three or four different ways to do it. Currently, this is the fastest way I know. So this is what I'll show you. Clearly, if you're a developer, you're looking at this and going, Shane is terrible at development. I take that as a badge of honor. I'm not a developer. You are. But uh, if you do have a better suggestion, throw it in the comments. I'd love to see a better way to do this. But like I said, I've done it. I've worked with other developers. This is the best I've got. Okay, let's talk about what it does. So list to clean and go get our list again, right? So once again, we already had the list, but I'm just uh, setting it up again. And then so items to clean equals the list to clean. So the large list items where the object color is red. So take all the items where the object color equals red and put them in items to clean. Count equals item count or item item items to clean dot count. So how many items are in there? We know it's uh, 43. So count equals 43. For i equals zero, i less than count. And I had to start at zero this time because there, the way share or the PowerShell list works is there is a zero item, right? It's the whole um, number counting where we learn that you know you have to start with zero. So you have to start and delete the zero item first. And so that's why I did a less than, right? When we earlier when we were doing the copy, we were doing um, less than or equal because we actually, or when we were doing the create, because we wanted to start with a number one and get to creating number 100. Not the case here. So this is very specific this way on purpose. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say list to clean, get item by ID, and the ID, ID that we need is the items to clean dot item dot I, so whatever number's here, dot ID. So it's very convoluted. I don't want to get into how it works too much. Just know that it's going to get in the right ID by breaking it all down. And then um, we're going to run the delete method. And then we're going to run the update. Um, if you are more interested in kind of how objects work and how I'm digging in and all that, there is a video called Objects about over here somewhere that you can go and watch. And I uh, talk about man manipulating objects a little more. All right, so now that that's done, if we do a refresh here on our large list, well, you can see right away, item title one was gone because it was red. And if we scroll down, we hit the over. So now there's 57 items in here. Yay, right? Because 57, 43 is 100. So we didn't lose any, but we're able to now have one list with all the blue stuff and one list with all the red stuff, uh, all starting from just one giant list. So there you go. That's our PowerShell for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the old subscribe button right here. This really uh, helps keep me motivated and makes me make more of these videos. And if um, you want, you can always uh, hit me up on Twitter, at Shane's Cows, or you can leave a comment below. I always respond to those. I've got a few people I'm emailing back and forth with from the comments now to help them work through their issues. And if you do need help with your work, you actually want to jump into production and do some of this type of stuff or more complicated things, I'm always available via Bold Zebras. So, cool. Well, thanks and have a great day.